After the setback of Flight 8, SpaceX is wasting no time testing hardware, refining Raptor engines, and making critical upgrades to ensure Flight 9 doesn't meet the same fate. But here's the real twist. A recent SpaceX job posting may have just revealed a crucial clue about what they're changing. What does it tell us about their next moves? And how is SpaceX preparing to avoid another failure? Let's break it all down. Following the recent cryogenic proof test of Booster 16, the super heavy stage designated for Flight 9, SpaceX moved forward with testing the Starship upper stage, Ship 35. The ship underwent three consecutive cryoproof tests on Tuesday and Wednesday. During these tests, both the methane and oxygen tanks were fully filled with cryogenic liquid nitrogen to verify the integrity of the propellant plumbing and tank structure. At the same time, thrust simulators equipped with hydraulic pistons applied stress to the aft section of the vehicle, simulating the forces exerted by Raptor engines during flight. Both Ship 35 and Booster 16 will soon be returned to the production site. In the coming weeks, they will be outfitted with Raptor engines and prepared for static fire testing. Meanwhile, the orbital launch mount, destined for Booster 16 static fire, is undergoing routine post-flight inspections and repairs. If everything stays on schedule, the launch pad should be ready for Booster 16 static fire within one to two weeks. Before the static fire test of Ship 35, SpaceX must address the issues that led to the anomalies in both Flight 7 and Flight 8. In Flight 7, a leak in the upper stage feed lines, exacerbated by harmonic oscillations, resulted in structural fatigue, fuel leaks, and ultimately a catastrophic fire that forced Starship's premature re-entry. To mitigate this, SpaceX has confirmed that the upper stage engine feed lines will be reinforced, fuel management optimized, thrust profiles adjusted, and improved venting with a nitrogen purge integrated into the design. These fixes seem to have worked in Flight 8, but new issues emerged that must be resolved before the next mission. Preliminary observations suggest that Flight 8 may have failed due to a leak in the regenerative cooling channels, which once again caused a fire that compromised engine performance and contributed to the vehicle's loss. Although SpaceX has not yet disclosed the exact cause of the leak, possible explanations include water hammer effects, pogo oscillations, cavitation, or localized overpressurization. Each of these phenomena can induce abnormal pressure spikes or oscillations in fluid systems sometimes leading to structural failures. Given the complexity and scale at which SpaceX operates, a full-scale redesign of the regenerative cooling system across all existing Raptor engines, whether already assembled, under testing at McGregor, or in production, would be both complex and time-consuming. Instead, the company appears to be focusing on near-term mitigation strategies that can be implemented rapidly without disrupting their launch schedule. Interestingly, a recently surfaced job posting for a propulsion systems engineer specializing in the Raptor engine feed line has offered an intriguing glimpse into SpaceX's current focus. This role is aimed at overhauling and optimizing the critical feed line systems that deliver propellants to the engines. The successful candidate will be responsible for sizing feed line components, performing detailed mechanical and structural analyses, and collaborating closely with both the fluid and manufacturing teams to ensure designs are optimized for mass production and can withstand the rigorous demands of flight. While SpaceX has not publicly confirmed its immediate engineering priorities, this job listing strongly suggests that the company is focusing on refining the propellant delivery system rather than making direct modifications to the engine bell itself, at least in the short term. Uh, adjustments may include optimizing flow rates and pressures to mitigate cavitation or turbulence-induced stresses enhancing thermal coatings or structural reinforcements in high-risk areas, and fine-tuning turbopump startup and shutdown sequences to minimize transient pressure spikes. A broader redesign of the regenerative cooling system could still be on the table for future Raptor versions, but SpaceX appears to be prioritizing feedline improvements as a more immediate and practical solution. If true, this approach would allow for rapid implementation of reliability upgrades without significantly disrupting the production and launch cadence of upcoming Starship flights. The exact design modifications will likely be revealed on their website before Flight 9, with the upcoming static fire test of Ship 35 serving as a critical validation step for these improvements. If all goes well, Starship Flight 9 could take place by late April, aligning with the timeline Elon Musk predicted after Flight 8. Interestingly, Ship 35 has been spotted with structural catch points featuring heavy reinforcement around them. These catch points were originally installed before Flight 8, when SpaceX planned to attempt a mid-air recovery of the ship using the tower arms during Flight 9. However, after the failures of Flight 7 and 8, 
SpaceX might put the recovery plan on hold and instead opt for a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean, similar to previous test flights. Only after achieving a fully successful splashdown will SpaceX likely proceed with an actual recovery attempt using the tower arms. In addition, five Starlink simulators were recently delivered to Starbase, presumably for loading into Ship 35 ahead of Flight 9. These simulators, which replicate the size and weight of next-generation Starlink satellites, will be loaded into the ship's payload bay prior to Flight 9. If all goes as planned, Ship 35 will conduct Starship's first-ever payload deployment test by releasing these simulators into space. Payload deployment was originally intended for Flights 7 and 8, but both missions failed before reaching that phase. A successful deployment in Flight 9 would mark a major milestone, demonstrating Starship's ability to deliver payloads into orbit and paving the way for future missions involving Starlink Gen 3 satellites. The second orbital launch pad at Starbase has seen notable progress in recent days, with significant developments in both the launch tower and the flame trench. After pausing for Flight 8, SpaceX has resumed testing the tower arms, demonstrating their upward and downward motion. Similar tests were conducted before Flight 8, where each time, the arms were raised progressively higher, held in position for a few minutes, and then lowered back to their resting position at the base of the tower. The next phase of testing will involve raising the arms to their highest position on the tower to perform range of motion checks, verifying hinge functionality, synchronization, and repeated cycling to ensure reliability for stacking and catching operations. Load tests using water bags will assess structural integrity and load handling capacity. Additionally, critical subsystems such as landing rails, alignment pins, booster stabilizers, and linear actuators will be inspected to confirm their readiness for operational use. Meanwhile, the flame trench construction is progressing rapidly, rebar placement has been completed, and concrete pouring is now underway to form a reinforced base capable of withstanding the intense thermal and mechanical stresses generated during Starship launches. At the Sanchez site, Work on the Pad B orbital launch mount and flame diverter is also progressing, with steady advancements in construction and system integration. However, Pad B is still far from operational, as several critical systems remain to be installed and tested before it can support launches. Beyond launch infrastructure, SpaceX is making a major upgrade to its water supply system by installing a dedicated pipeline to replace water trucks. The project involves laying two miles of 8-inch high-density polyethylene pipes to transport deluge water directly from the factory area to the orbital launch complex, ensuring a more efficient and reliable water supply for both launch pads. This pipeline is just the beginning of a broader infrastructure expansion, with long-term plans to extend the pipeline to the city of Brownsville, eliminating the need for water trucks entirely. SpaceX recently detailed its ambitious plan to expand Starship production and launch capabilities with the construction of two massive Gigabay integration facilities, one at Starbase and another at Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Each Gigabay will stand 116 meters tall and offer an immense 1.3 million cubic meters of interior processing space. These facilities are designed to support the next generation of Starship and Super Heavy vehicles, accommodating vehicles up to 81 meters tall. The structure will include 24 dedicated work cells for integration and refurbishment. Compared to the existing megabase at Starbase, the Gigabay will provide 11 times more workspace and add 19 additional work cells. Work on the Starbase Gigabay has already begun, with completion targeted by the end of 2026. The facility will be built directly adjacent to the Star Factory, integrating seamlessly with its structure, as shown in SpaceX's official render. To make room for Gigabay, the existing high bay will be demolished, just as the mid bay was removed in 2023 for Star Factory's expansion. Preparations for demolition are already underway, with welding robots and turntables from the high bay already moved to storage. Meanwhile, demolition machinery is arriving, signaling that teardown will begin soon. Meanwhile, site preparations for the Florida Gigabay are also underway, with its construction expected to be completed by the end of next year. Additionally, SpaceX is planning a co-located manufacturing facility in Florida, similar to Star Factory at Starbase, to enable direct Starship production on the Space Coast. To support initial Starship launches from Florida, SpaceX is building a launch and catch site at LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center. The launch tower was stacked in 2022, and in the coming months, teams will construct and install a flame deflector system similar to the one being built for the second launch pad at Starbase. According to SpaceX, pending environmental reviews, 
The first Starship launch from Florida is expected by late 2025. Since full-scale Starship production has not yet started in Florida, SpaceX will initially transport completed Super Heavy boosters and Starship upper stages from Starbase to Florida by barge to establish a launch-ready fleet. Additionally, SpaceX is evaluating the possibility of launching Starship from SLC-37 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Originally constructed in the late 1950s, SLC-37 supported Saturn 1 and Saturn 1B launches before being repurposed for Delta IV missions. With Delta IV now retired, SpaceX has begun preliminary assessments to determine SLC-37's viability for Starship operations. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA recently launched two significant missions, Spherix and Punch, to enhance our understanding of both the universe's evolution and the Sun's influence on our solar system. Let's break down these missions in detail. The Spherix and Punch missions were launched on March 11th from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, integrated onto a single Falcon 9 rocket to optimize resource utilization. The spacecraft were deployed within an hour following liftoff, with Spherix deploying first, followed by Punch about 10 minutes later. This sequence ensured that each mission reached its designated sun-synchronous low-Earth orbit without interference. Spherix, short for Spectrophotometer for the History of the Universe, Epoch of Reionization, and ISIS Explorer, is a space telescope designed for a comprehensive all-sky survey in near-infrared light. The mission will conduct a comprehensive sky survey, mapping over 450 million galaxies and more than 100 million stars within the Milky Way, by analyzing the large-scale distribution of galaxies and examining residual signals from the cosmic microwave background radiation, scientists hope to gain deeper insights into cosmic inflation, the brief but intense expansion of the universe that took place just fractions of a second after the Big Bang. Additionally, Spherix will measure the extragalactic background light, a faint, diffuse glow that permeates the universe, originating from all the stars and galaxies that have ever existed. The EBL acts as a cosmic fossil record, preserving information about the formation and evolution of galaxies over billions of years. One of Spherix's critical objectives is to analyze the chemical composition of interstellar matter. By using infrared spectroscopy, it will detect water, carbon-based molecules, and other essential compounds around young stars and within planetary nurseries. This data will help scientists understand how the building blocks of life are distributed throughout our galaxy and beyond. Meanwhile, Punch, or polarimeter to unify the corona and heliosphere, is a mission designed to study the sun's corona and its transition into the solar wind. The mission consists of four microsatellites, each weighing approximately 40 kilograms, equipped with cameras featuring polarizing filters to capture high-contrast images of the sun's outer atmosphere. These satellites will function as a coordinated observatory, providing global, three-dimensional observations of the corona and its expansion into interplanetary space. Punch aims to investigate how solar coronal mass ejections propagate through space and interact with the Earth's magnetosphere. These massive bursts of solar plasma can trigger geomagnetic storms, which have the potential to disrupt satellite communications, GPS systems, and even electrical grids on Earth. By studying the transition region between the corona and the solar wind, Punch will help improve our ability to predict and mitigate space weather effects. In short, the Spherix and Punch missions represent a significant step forward in NASA's quest to understand both the cosmic origins of life and the solar dynamics that shape our environment. By exploring galaxies and the Sun's influence, these missions will provide invaluable insights into the universe's evolution and the factors that sustain life on Earth. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.